in Nigeria, at least 43% of uh, small and medium enterprise businesses are owned by women. And that represents a minimum of, of about 23 million women. So you can imagine the capacity of uh, the economy when it comes to these female-owned businesses. You can go to the next slide. Now, about two weeks ago, I saw a woman uh, walking on the road with her three children. And we were closing from church, and she's a member of our church. And I just thought, this woman is walking under the sun, and let me just drive them home. The reality is that as we were going, I was having a conversation with her in the car. And I asked her what she does. And she said, well, they had just moved to Lagos. Her husband, is a, uh, he works with the government. Let me not mention the agency. And she just cooks Indomie from time to time and sells. So this is a woman that falls into this category of female-owned businesses. Now, I share this picture because this building that you see behind these two children is where she lives with her two, three children and her husband, this one room. And the way she's trying to sustain her uh, children is just by cooking indomie. And this is a government-allocated facility for the husband to house his family. And I think this in itself talks of the current realities and this is inside town. I'm not even talking about at the outskirts of town, in the heart of Lagos. This is the reality of the women that we have in our community that are trying to build businesses. Why? Most women, the reason they are doing that is because they want a better future for their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. Please, let's move on. Now, having said that, of course, I have to think of talking about sustainability from different angles. And I have sort of capped it around seven C's. And these are seven C's that are critical to uh, climate change, to sustainability, to looking at the environment, social, and the governance factors of uh, businesses in Nigeria, in Africa, and in the globe. So when it comes to ESG, as I said, environment, social, and governance, there are so many areas that um, we are lacking. But again, when we look at it from seven C's, I will sort of expose to all of us what we can do as female-led businesses to ensure sustainability in our nation, Nigeria. So, let's move on. The first one is challenges. Now, the challenges are humongous. They are all around us. They don't stop. And they only keep increasing. Because as we think we have solved one, we just have about 10 or 20 or 30 things hitting at us. And as we're trying to swim out of one ocean, we find ourselves in another ocean. Please, can we move to the next slide? And within the context of challenges, lies opportunities. At least COVID was a wake-up call for many people. You assume your business is sustainable until COVID proved to us that that your business is not enough to even last a year. And so a lot of people went back to the drawing board. But with challenges, we need to open our eyes to the opportunities that exist. And these are not even real challenges that I've listed here. There are too many of them. And why I keep on coming back to the gender bills, because it is very, very high on our agenda as women in this nation at this current time, it's important for me to mention that as female-led businesses, if we want to be sustainable, we must identify the challenges that are affecting our environment, that are social challenges, that are also affecting governance, and plug ourselves into being solution providers for one of these challenges. You cannot be comfortable where you are currently because the rate at which the world is going, we are in a dynamic global uh, uh, space and the rate of change is high. The rate of disruption is even higher. So we need to be far ahead of whatever it is we're facing. Please, let's move to the next slide. My next C, of course, is coordination. Coordination talks about leadership. Coordination talks about building a team. And it's important for us to have coordinators within and outside our businesses. 
because leadership and not just any kind of leadership, transformational and strategic leadership in business is critical for sustainability. Whatever it is that you need to do to build your capacity as a leader, you must do it if you want your business to be sustainable in this nation and beyond. And if you want to scale up and scale out and have businesses that will not only outlive you but will outlive your great-grandchildren, then you must think strategically as a leader and you must think of how you can scale up not just within Nigeria and Africa but also around the globe. Next slide, please. My next C after leadership is talking about creativity. You know, one of the things that women are known for, especially in Africa, is their versatility and creativity. With creativity comes innovation. With creativity comes technology. With creativity comes so many things that have to do with sustainability. We must begin to think of creative solutions that will help scale up our businesses to that level of sustainability. Now, if you are not thinking creatively, you are on the path to the graveyard to bury another business because we all know that the statistics say that most businesses do not last more than two to three years before they have to pack up. So women, you must begin to think of creative solutions. We must continue. And we have so many examples of people that scale up within the context of what um, they have seen. Going back to the drawing table, sitting on strategic and decision-making tables and making a difference. And creativity is critical uh, because when you gather minds, great minds and creative minds, you get solutions. And so that comes back to the kinds of people that you have on your board or your advisory council that can make things happen for your businesses. Please, let's, let's, let's move on. My next C is talking about the consumers. Now, when we talk about sustainability, the truth of the matter is that most people don't even understand what all this noise is about. Most people don't even understand climate change. Your typical consumer is hungry. Your typical consumer is experiencing poverty. Your typical consumer is just thinking about survival. And so, there is a need for your consumers to even understand what this climate change is all about, what sustainability is all about, what ESG is all about. Because once they understand, consumers have the power to push back. You see in more developed uh, nations where people will boy boycott a product because of sustainability issues. Maybe they, they have a desire and a heart for uh, animals. And so they boycott all manner of four re related manufacturing companies just to show that they're protesting against that. As women, you have an opportunity to identify a sector that will be relevant to your business to have a way of pulling them in your circle and begin to strategize to have sustainability. And that is when you will build raving fans. And raving fans are those consumers that will stand by you through thick and thin and will make sure that they support your business, they advocate for your business, and they raise your profile around their communities. Let's move on to the next C, and I believe that is communication. Now, any business that does not know how to communicate effectively is losing the fuel in the fire. Because with this sustainability, as I've said, when people don't understand the issues, it is very difficult for you to gain any kind of traction. And it is a similar thing that we're facing currently in our nation with all manner of rallies and protests and strikes that are going on. We need to be able to communicate as female entrepreneurs Communicate so effectively that people understand clearly what this thing is all about. So whatever area or sector they are in, you must begin to realize and understand the issues of sustainability as is relevant to your own sector. Because if you are not informed, how do you now want to keep others informed? And once they are not informed, by the time the chains of sustainability 
catch up with you. My people, you'll be under arrest. And you won't be only be under arrest. You will just go straight into that cell and die out there. So we must begin to build our communication strategy. Begin to get key people. I mean, I know that people like Ini here are very good communication strategies. You need to begin to identify helpers as female-based businesses, which takes me to the next one. And I think that is talking about collaboration, if I'm not... Okay, capital. Uh, Of course, we all know that you can't sustain anything without resources. True or false? Resources are key. And resources come in different forms. It's not just about money. Resources can be the support you get in cash, in kind, and in all manner of um, areas that are relevant to your business. For you to be able to raise and get capital, because a lot of women-owned businesses will tell you that access to capital, access to markets are a challenge. But what we have come to see is that you can actually get things done without spending money. The best way to do that is you must be able to communicate your issues and you'll be surprised that helpers will arise to, to um, fund whatever it is you are looking for. So, I will say that for you to be sustainable as a business, you must be able to raise capital, but you raise capital and resources by effective communication, by understanding the issues, by presenting them well, identify where the money is and the strategy you will use to get that money out. So many people have done that ahead of you. We have so many women that I know in Lagos that have raised up to $1 million in capital, $10 million, not Naira, please. And they are making things happen, not just for themselves, but for other businesses. And so you must be well-positioned, well-educated, well-prepared for you to raise capital. The next, and I, almost the final one, is collaboration. Collaboration is key. Gone are the times when you have to run that race alone. Every sustainable business now is looking for partnerships that work. They're looking for networks that work. You have to plug into a system to be able to be effective, to be able to grow your base, to be able to get helpers. We call them um, business helpers, right? That will help you get to that sustainable level. You don't have to do everything by yourself. Collaboration is the way, and all you need to do is look at who are the collaborators that you need within your network. And you must identify all the professional networks that are relevant to your industry. And make sure that you don't just identify them and be a part of them. You identify them, be an active member, and let your voices be heard. Because when your voices are heard, you get recognized. And when you get recognized, you get the things that you need to get to make things move. So, as I conclude, my people, sustainability for female-owned businesses are a reality. All we need to do is ensure that we understand what it takes to get us there. And I have given you a few examples, and I want to believe that we will see more sustainable female businesses in a short time to come. Thank you very much.